All right, we are officially live. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Jerry's studio. My name is Emmy Klein. I am the resident artist here at Jerry's Artorama, as well as the host of Jerry's Live every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, but that show is usually a very uh, kind of scheduled, I have a, a game plan, like a class planned out for you guys to learn. This is just a, an hour where you guys get to ask me anything uh, art related. It doesn't have to do with what I'm working on. It doesn't have to do with anything. Uh, as long as you have an art question, you can ask it. So no official schedule here, but you know, if you got a question about anything, just let me know. Uh, now I'm going to get the chat started here so I can see what you guys are typing. And then uh, I'm going to continue to work on what I am working on, which once I get this going, I think that was the right one, yeah. Ah, Paulo, you're already here. Love it. Hello, hello. All right, so I am working on one of my favorite aspects of my job ever. I am testing art supplies. Love this. This is, this is where I thrive. I um, essentially am trying to break things, art supplies related. So. Um, right now, I am taping because what I'm working on is watercolor paper. We have a brand new watercolor paper that should be coming out here relatively soon, and it's this one, this small square down here. Uh, unfortunately, I can't actually tell you what the brand is just yet. When that actually is released, I will be able to share all of that with you guys, but I am testing it against Arches and the Fabriano Artistico. Uh, this is the extra white, uh, and I actually, <laughs> I had to double check this. Uh, Arches comes in a natural white. That's why there's a slight difference in tone. And this new paper seems to be kind of in between. It's really hard to tell on camera because everything kind of just looks really, really bright white. But in person, this has almost like a cream color to it, where it's like, this is like stark white. And this has like a lovely in between. Like that's the only way I can, I can really say it. They're all white paper, but you know, it's one of those things. All right, hello, hello. I see everybody in the chats. All right. Uh, so I got these two taped and then I just have to tape this last one here. Um, because it is watercolor paper and I'm testing uh, various brands of watercolors on there with di different techniques. Um, also, if you guys have an idea on how to test watercolor paper, please let me know. I have a list of things that I'm planning on doing. So I'm going to be using pencils and erasing. I'm going to be using masking fluid. I'm using tape. I'm going to try and lift uh, with a brush and an aqua lift spongy sponge. Because uh, I'm going to try and scrub it and see what happens. Uh, then I'm going to try some granulation. I have courtesy of Amanda, who, by the way, is in the chats for you guys and sitting right over here. Uh, a tiny little, uh, this is Daniel Smith's Potter's Pink. And so um, I borrowed a highly granulating uh, color from her because she's the watercolor queen and has so many. <laughs> Not that many. Zero shame. <laughs> <laughs> she will buy more, let's be honest. Um, but yeah, so granulation with that one. I'm gonna try some mixing colors, obviously a wash. Uh, then I wanna do detail strokes. I wanna try softening my strokes. Then I wanna try some glazing. Then I have a variety of pens over here. And last but not least, I'm gonna attempt to see how well these remove from the blocks and see kind of what it does. But if you guys have any other ideas on how I can attempt to destroy watercolor paper and see what the limitations are. That's that's my goal, is to see how this lands amongst our other very professional watercolor paper. Um, yeah, if you guys have ideas, let me know. Lighting it on fire is not an option. I will say, Katie will kill me. I'm not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, uh, the other thing to note is that these are all 100% cotton watercolor paper. So I wanted to make sure to have kind of all in the same realm. You're going to be very busy. Yes, yes, we are. 
this is this is what I do. I uh, I get art supplies and then I get to see kind of where it lands and how how good it is on the scale of professional to student grade kind of a thing so I can relay that information to you guys and know. Do you have an alcohol pen up there? It's about, I don't have an alcohol based pen up there. I have a I have two Poscas. One is gold because I want to try the metallics just to see. Uh, and then I have a white because I want to try that on top of my watercolors because I do that a lot uh, for like fun little details. I'll pop a couple on uh, top of my watercolor for like if I forget to leave a highlight or something. Uh, then I have an Edding acrylic marker which uh, I wanted to see because uh, with this one I know if I lay it down and then I get a wet brush and go back onto it, it should almost watercolor out if I move fast enough. It's gonna be interesting. How does it do with watercolor washes over a technical pen? Uh, I am going to be using pencil, but I do have, oh, I must have, this must be an old one. I probably have used this so much that <laughs> I lost the writing, I rubbed it off. Uh, this is the um, accurate waterproof technical pen. And then I have the super black which is, uh, they're both about the same, yeah, 0.5 millimeter. I'm gonna try and see how those work. Do we have alcohol markers? Um, they should be in the random markers. Uh, yeah, I think I see one right there. The other ones are in a bin up there. Katrina said that you're gonna be very busy, but I think Christina and I are also gonna be very busy. Yeah, uh, what you guys don't see is that I have Amanda and Christina over here running around, probably looking for all of the supplies I didn't grab. <laughs> So, round of applause for them. They are amazing. Could not do this without them. So, what different masking fluids am I going to try? I actually only have one on me right now. The Turner uh, uh, masking fluid. This is, it comes in a jar. Um, do we have any other? I know we have more of these jars over there because this is like my go-to. Um, and I know I had a masky pen over there, but I think I refilled it with this <laughs> same kind. Is it, is Pavio permanent or? Okay. Cause fun fact, had to learn this the hard way. Pavio has a permanent masking fluid and then they have a not so permanent. They also have latex free, which is really great. If you do have a latex allergy. Um, yeah, that's why there's a caution, attention, irritant, because this has latex in it. I believe this is the removable one, so I can try that. Drawing gum. Drawing gum, masking fluid. Those are the same, essentially the same thing. I don't know how old this is, but this is alcohol. Is it? I think it oh, is. Oh, we like do have alcohol ink, like, alcohol ink over there, too. Can we put them in one of these? Um... Maybe. Maybe. We can use that. I don't know if we can show it, so I'm waiting on an answer on that. Mm, gotcha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, let me make sure I'm not missing any things. Oh, you can see a slight difference in color. That's awesome. That's all the masking fluid I saw. Okay. How does it do? Okay, yeah. Arches. Yes, this is Arches. This right here is the Fabriano Artistico, so professional level paper. This is the Arches. I have it upside down. Um, this is the, they're, I believe they're all cold press as well. 140 pound, every single one of these, uh, hundred percent cotton. So this is the only one I cannot officially tell you cause it has, it's a secret right, right this moment. <laughs> what is the use of a permanent masking fluid, uh, to make people like me go crazy? Because you think you're getting a not so permanent masking fluid. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know why there's a permanent masking fluid. I just know that I have used it and then got really angry because I went to go pull it off and it doesn't come off. And I, that's something I should probably look up because I I actually had the exact same question when I realized I had the wrong one on my art, and then was just so mad that I decided to cry a little bit and then move on with my day. Um, oh, fun fact, if you are doing watercolor with masking tape, 
Um, so I laid down my parallel lines and I'm laying down the other lines right now. Uh, what I do is when I'm laying them down, I usually start with one side and then I take my fingernail and I kind of rub it up against the edge of where they kind of lay on top of each other. Uh, the reason why is because that crease really sticks down my tape and allows that to uh, really adhere to the, the paper, or, uh, yeah, the paper, without having a slight uh, opening right in that corner that your watercolor can now seep through. So that's my way of not getting watercolor bleeding under my tape, in, especially in the corners. I guess right. the idea of permanent masking fluid is that it would eventually repel what you put over it, but... Oh, it's a very cool specific guy. color. <laughs> you would also go crazy if you used it, yeah. Yeah, the border of uh, Arches, it definitely, you can see it up there. It definitely uh, mm -hmm. peeks through a little bit, yeah. You cannot deny that that's what it is, but this one... Like I said, this is one I'm, I'm officially testing. All right, so I gotta get started here. Uh, let's go with my Lucas. Oh, actually, before I do that, let me grab pencil. Uh, I do the same thing up here. Same thing over here. All right, so first I'm gonna use a kneaded eraser just to see kind of how that picks it up. If you want like a ghosted image of your drawing, that would do. I think I found an alcoholic marker. Yay! Oh Why yeah. Ink, ink? I think this is just ink, well, if I remember correctly, but that's all right. I'll use it. Right, let me get this clean off. So let's pick up some of this graphite. Okay, so like I like normal, it's picking up uh, a lot of the graphite, but it's not um, it's not picking up 100%. So you could have like a ghosted image of whatever you sketch. All right, same thing. All seems to be working. No problems there. Now I'm gonna go to my uh, vanish eraser and just see if I can really erase that out. Yeah, seems to come off. Same thing here, and same thing there. I guess actually, because that was an already erased area, let's, let's do the darker area. Are you gonna test an electric origin? Um, not, I don't think that's necessary. Um, just because I feel like when it comes to erasing, what I'm really looking for is that it's not tearing up the paper. And this is going to do the exact same thing as a electric eraser. It's just a larger surface area. So uh, let me actually keep in some pencil lines because I'm going to try and erase it after I put watercolor on there. Uh, now... You got some masking fluid on there so I can get it to dry. And fun fact, for when I'm testing uh, these kind of things and I don't want to actually sacrifice a brush to masking fluid, I just use the uh, back side of a brush to dip it in there. And I'm going to make a couple dots. What I like about this is that I get a big one and then it gets smaller and smaller as I keep dotting it. So I can see a larger area of masking fluid as well as smaller little tiny dots and see kind of how it does if it bleeds under those smaller ones. All right. I also want to see if it tears up the paper when I remove it. Alice says it uses the silicone tools, and that is ah, smart. That is very smart, because that will just come right back off. <sighs> Let me see. Do, 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 do. Yes, this one says removable liquid frisket. That's the other word. Drawing gum, liquid frisket, 
masking fluid, all synonymous. It's just liquid latex or like liquid rubber kind of a thing. But this one, I'm glad you actually got this one because this one is blue and it will tell me of whether or not it's going to stain the paper. I have a lot of bubbles in there. Oh well. Nat, there's a gnat. <laughs> Sorry, he was very interested in my artwork, or the, I guess the drawing fluid, drawing gum, whatever you want to call it. Huh. Chat is over here talking about using a ruling pen with masking fluid, and I've never thought of it. A ruling pen. Mm -hmm. The little metal. Why is a ruling pen not? Oh, yeah, no, that's an old school that's technique. Cool. Yeah. yeah I've never done it. Sorry, did you guys just see my brain working there? <laughs> it tried so hard. All right, let me get all the crumbles off that I just got on there. Now we get to the fun stuff, because that's gonna dry and I will go back on top of that. Um, yes, there's that. Let me get some of this technical pen down as well. Because this one is waterproof. I can't remember, is the super black fine liner, is that also waterproof? Here, I'm gonna put that up and down. So the accurate technical pen is horizontal, the super fine black is up and down. And I also have like a literal like just desk pen. This I know will bleed. So I'm gonna wait until that is at the end. Super black is permanent, waterproof, and acid-free. Nice, okay, cool. Now for the fun stuff. Where is it? I did not say you're old, I'm just saying you know an old school technique. Very different. I mean, I, I know old school techniques in oil paints, so that doesn't mean I'm from the 1700s. Right? Empire. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I am immortal. Um, all right, pick a color, any color. That's on my palette. Purple. Purple. I'm not gonna attempt to say that because I have to hear Katie's voice in my head. Dioxazine. Dioxazine violet. You didn't start it and I knew which word you couldn't say. <laughs> Every time. All right, so I've tried erasing. Let me actually use a pen on this, hold on. Erasing, I got masking fluid and pencil down. Tape is down. All right, so I just need to lay down a lot of color. Is essentially what I need to do. I want to work. Also, do like a wet and wet. See how that does. I love these Lucas watercolors. They lift or they they activate so fast. I love them. Some of that texture, almost like a little dry brush technique moment. Moment. Dry brush moment. All right, so that one I'm gonna let that dry. Let me get my stuff out of my way. Uh, I need a larger pen or pen. Well, paintbrush. I'm gonna do wet in wet. Get my wet paper. I am probably going to have to either work smaller on this one. Yeah. Or. Less surface area there. Kind of. Uh, I might have to take it off the block earlier than I intend to. All right, so everything is nice. I'm trying not to dip into that dirty water there. Nice and soupy. All right, so. Did you see that with the Fabriano? Is it that one? Not the 1264, okay, this is the like, Artistico. If you need a second. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. This one right here is the one that I can't say oh, out okay. loud. This is the secret. So this is Arches and this is Fabriano Artistico. Both uh, really high quality, professional level um, watercolor papers. Is it? Is it time for Potter's Pink? Not yet. Not yet. I do appreciate. 
I love that. The excited. <laughs> yes. Uh, let's go for a phthalo green. Ooh, that's satisfying. I'm just kind of going in. I feel like this is a little bit drier than it was, but I'll go this direction. Ooh, so satisfying. All right. I feel like this got a little bit dry on the end here, on this side. Just add a little water to the areas. Eh, I mean, it's doing the same thing. This got a little bit more pigment just because it was the last to go on there. Um, let's do... All right, so I need to mix some colors. Let's do this Indian yellow. And perhaps a magenta. That'll be fun. A little bit more pigment on there. That's fun. I love that. All right, that's a Fabriano. Indian yellow. Magenta. I need a little bit more water and a little bit more pigment on there. That Indian yellow is so pretty. I mean, I can still see the chat, so if you guys still have any questions or any ideas on how to uh, test watercolor paper, let me know. Amanda will be right back with you in just a second. I think I'm back. Yay. Just need to refresh. That happens. Yeah. All right, now, not only am I trying to see how things work as, as they are wet, I also want to see how they dry. That's a big one. See exactly what the color does, especially because I'm using the same ones. Um, now, actually, I'm going to switch to a different brand. Let's do this Soho. Now, I have my, oh, it goes this way, my swatches. These are fun. Uh, you know, I'm feeling a blue. I'm feeling a blue. Let's go with this blue. This is a good blue. This one I'm going to actually wash on top of the pencil and the uh, pen. Okay. Yeah, neither of those pens moved at all, which is great. And I will say on the uh, paper, on all of them so far, the pen is not bleeding either, which is really good. Because sometimes on watercolor paper, if you put the wrong kind of pen on there, like if it's a really juicy kind of a thing, it will uh, kind of almost spider out a little bit. Or at least, I've had that happen on like the le less expensive papers where they don't have the right sizing. A little bit more water. Alice said soft. Salt. I like Ooh. Sea salt. Is that okay? I, I, I feel like sea salt's good, okay. actually. It's, it's chunky. chunky. Chunky is good. Are you I, well, I, can look for other I don't know if I can get it out of there. You just gotta, you gotta grind it. Yeah, no, no, no. I meant like if I wanted the chunk. Because the bigger the chunk. Make it bigger. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I, can, I can adjust yeah, it. Yeah. But like the bigger the chunk, the more it pulls. Sure. Oh. Which is really fun. In case you didn't know. 
So, all right, those are in. Let's do, because the smaller chunks of, uh, of salt tend to uh, dissolve in the water. Um, let's put in a bit of a glaze on this purple. How about that? And you know, I'm feeling neon. I want to do this neon green. Well, I, I say neon, it's fluorescent. Look for water, look for watermarks. Um, I can't look for, well, actually I don't think there are watermarks on these blocks at all. Yeah, I usually only see them on loose paper. Yeah, the watercolor or the watermarks uh, that are pressed into the watercolor papers usually only happen on the loose sheets of paper. Um, and the reason why is mostly because like this already is branded with the the uh, front of the book, I guess the block kind of a thing. And uh, the watermark also serves a, a purpose of telling you which side is the front. So since this is already a block and glued down in a specific way, you don't have to do, worry about that either, which is fun. All right, so that, let that dry. Why do we have a salt? This is salt. Yeah, uh, so uh, if you, have you ever, I don't, I, I'm guessing you've never put salt on your watercolors. You gotta season your watercolors. You gotta season your art sometimes. Don't lick it after you're done. Nope, don't, no, no, no. <laughs> no licking the watercolors after we're done. All right, so let me get a big old puddle here and I'm gonna show you what the salt does, which is really, really fun. Uh, let's do this one. This one looks like a good color. Ooh, that is a fun color. All right, so big old puddle of watercolors. I want to get a lot of water on there. I want to really saturate it, right? And then, I'm just going to toss that. Let me get my salt on the larger grinder set. All right, so what's really cool is uh, since this is really wet and that salt is, um, oh, there's a word for it. I can't remember what the word is, but essentially it pulls in moisture like a sponge. And that's what it's gonna do. So as this is drying, it's going to start pulling in the moisture. Now that moisture contains pigment, so it's gonna look, um, it's gonna have a variation to the, the surface, which is really, really fun. Oh, you've never tried. You should try salt. Oop. I don't know who's, uh... oh, is that, that's, that's a chunk of salt. I thought that was somebody's food. <laughs> Don't want that to touch the art supplies. Because this is, I, if I do that, I promise I will buy new salt for the, the office. Sorry. All right, so let's do. Hydroscopic. Hydroscopic, hydro. that's what it is. Hygro? I thought it was hydro, because hydro, hydro is water. Hydro pulls the water out. Hydro would like put it in. Is it? Okay. I mean, you're the one with the Google, so I, I trust you. Hygroscopic, that's the term. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's gonna be so pretty. Also, salty. My artwork's a little salty. Hygro, there you go. Yes. Oh yeah, I didn't come up with that word, definitely palette. Oh, see? I just it to you. So let's try this one. Oh, such a pretty color. Yeah, I love this color. It shows up so pretty on the screen. I mean, clearly, can you tell that yeah. I love this color? No, would never it's guess. It's just, it's not like it's all over my head. <laughs> Gotta say, on the, uh, the larger setting, it just falls right out there. That's great. The extra salt off of there. All right, now, with the salt technique, you have to let it fully dry before you move it. Um, if you were to move it before it is dry, either that water is going to uh, go back to being, it's like self-leveling kind of a thing, because it's water. 
Um, but once I let this dry, I can just brush off the salt and it'll be fine. All right, so let's see. We're trying glazing is done. Oh God, I have salt everywhere. Excuse me. All right, oh, powder's pink. Let's do some granulations. This is the tiniest amount of Potter's Pink. All right. I'm going to try and do a larger swatch for this one. I just want to see. Such a lovely color. That should be fine. All right, that will granulate in nicely. Oop. Still have to do my tape. I'm gonna kind of do a radiation in that area. Potter's pink, yes. Oop, and I'm splattering it everywhere. It's all right. It's a little extra Potter's Pink here and there. Now I do want to kind of have a little bit more water on just one side. A more wet area. You've never tried the Daniel Smith Potter's Pink? It's it's such a really fun color because like it really does remind me of pottery because it, it has that like pink kind of tinge but it still has that naturalistic kind of color to it which is great did i get salt in there or those bubbles sorry excuse my head here real quick nope those are bubbles don't want bubbles that is because of brushwork that's on me all right, so this is very purple. I'm gonna just pull off another bucket of water here. You are at 30 minutes. I'm at 30 minutes already? Mm -hmm. Woo! Go fast. I mean, time flies when you're playing with watercolors. <laughs> Brand is the powder pink. Yeah, the powder's pink is Daniel Smith. They have a lot of granulating colors, uh, which is kind of where they, they really shine, which is fantastic. So I think that's it for the, oh, I do want to do that gradation. Um, and I want to do the metallics. Let's do a metallic real quick before I do a gradation. All right, so let's do a smaller thing. Um, let's go with the bronze. Bronze sounds good. Little. Oh, I also want to do some detail brush marks, but I want to do that with a normal color. You can't do it with this, but. And uh, by the way, this is the Soho metallic set of, I'm also trying to avoid a piece of salt right there, sorry. <laughs> Uh, the Soho metallic set of 12. Sorry, I also did just have to count real fast by looking at it. <laughs> All right, so now we got some metallic watercolors on there. Now let me get this Lucas again because I want to do, oh, that Payne's Gray will be perfect for a detail kind of brush line. This is my Payne's Gray. Right? Okay. I'm running out of space on this <laughs> piece of paper. So, so far they're all holding their shape like they're not 
it's not uh, spidering out and uh, kind of bleeding like that at all, which is really great. It's exactly what I want to see. Because remember, I'm not testing the watercolors, I'm testing the paper. Also, I think our masking fluid is dry. Perfect. Now, get some of this magenta, put it over top of that so that can dry before we pull off that off of the masking fluid. See how crisp those are. very colored col colored in all right now actually I'm going to take this magenta and start my gradation um, I'm gonna start the gradation actually let's do this on the I almost said favorite castell Wow Fabriano wrong F brand name Go to cadmium yellow light. So this I want to see how well it does with the tape. Please excuse that. Someone uh, in our parking lot is setting off fireworks. That's what it sounds like. It, it is fireworks. They were setting it off earlier, and I don't know who it is. I tried to see. I think it's our neighbors. It's a little celebration happening next door. Excuse them. It's just July 4th, but a month late, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just got their months mixed up a little bit. But yeah, if you hear that, that's, uh, that's our neighbors being... Very excited for August 4th. All right, while I'm doing these uh, gradations, I probably won't be able to like look at the chat. So if I miss anything, please let me know. Amanda, sorry. Oh, and I were discussing Potter's Pink, but. I was like, yeah, I saw uh, all of that and I was like, I am not gonna be able to sit here and read that. Nope. Sorry. All right, so that one, I'm gonna let that dry for a second. And I'm also going to switch. I'm also trying not to like drip this big old puddle I have here, which seems to be absorbing a lot of the salt. I think this one was very wet. That's all right. Add a little bit more. You can always add more salt, right? Okay, now this one, I'm gonna do the same thing, same colors. Is that about, is that about how far I went down? Yeah, that looks about right. All right, now for this cadmium yellow light. I don't, I don't know why they're celebrating. Maybe it's someone's birthday. I don't know why we weren't invited. I'm, you know what? I'm gonna go out there and just be like, where are the cupcakes at, y'all? We're celebrating. Gotta have cupcakes, right? All right, now for this green. Oh, this is the May green, by the way, at the bottom. Or as I like to call it, Slime green. My favorite color green. I love it. Paula wants to know if they can guess what the secret 
papers, but I don't think you can. Uh, you can try to guess the, the new secret paper, but uh, I cannot confirm nor deny. So, I like that game, but uh, I can't tell you if you're correct until this is officially out. <laughs> All right, so there's that one. Set that up here. And I can actually pull this one back down. So you can see as it dries, it shifts back. All right, so now for the secret paper. I think there's a bit of a hair in there. Oops. I think it's attached to the tape too. So it's just, in, it's gonna be in there. That's fine. If I had tweezers, I'd pick that out before my watercolor dries, but since this is just a test, I'm not too worried about it. But if you ever do have like a fuzzy stuck to your tape and you want to get it out, make sure you get it out before your watercolor dries. That's the, the key is like if you need to adjust anything, that's the way to make sure it works without having too much of an obvious like whoopsies. All right. Then I can start testing this up against, I do have watercolor pencils as well. I wanna see not only how well they do on here, but I wanna see how well the pencil takes to it. Um, we were actually talking about this earlier. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to use the Charvin pastels that are water soluble as well, but I left them in our photo department. So that's just gonna have to wait until later. <laughs> Um, but the fun thing now that we get to do, so I wanted to try, these are all relatively dry. Um, I wanted to try and see if I can pick up that uh, pencil again, because usually, you know, graphite's pretty stuck in. You might be able to pick up a little bit. That's what I'm usually used to. Uh, but usually when you erase out pencil after you've watercolored, it also lifts the pigment because it's watercolor. Uh, but I wanted to see how well this does. Either that or the pencil is like, no. Yeah. Like this one. Just said no. Mm -hmm. No. I live here now. This is my home. But this is also a really good test because uh, if the watercolor paper, because it is 100% cotton rag, um, if it started pilling up and that paper, now that I've gotten it wet and it's dried again, if I start erasing on it, how how surf, how is that surface gonna react to me scrubbing it with an eraser? And they, they've all held up beautifully. And granted, I did have a little bit more pigment in these two than this one, but it all still behaved the same. Um, now, I'm gonna try salt. That's salt everywhere, I'm sorry. Sorry guys. Um, Sharpie, I'm gonna just leave it there. Does it bleed out? Eh, just a tiny bit. Let's see, I'm gonna do this over here. Yeah, that's about the same. Ooh, this one I think absorbs it a little bit more. It's, I saw that that ink was kind of spreading out real fast. Um, all right, now, so that is done. I'm gonna try, let's just do the one pen on top of watercolor. Yeah. This is working out well. Still not bleeding. No feathering on the edges. 
All right. Let's try this gold and white pasta. And then I'm going to start trying to lift a little bit of something. Let's do... Now that's funny. These two, maybe it's just slightly, uh, yeah, this is still slightly damp, that's why. So the paper is still slightly damp and you see how the gold kind of started to spread a little, well, I hope you guys can see that. The gold started to spread just a little bit where I went over that damp paper. That's, that's good to know. Unintended Which, test. Didn't know it did that. I mean, it makes sense though, cause it's wet paper and this is a, an acrylic based marker, right? Posca is acrylic based. I believe it's acrylic based. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, let's try. Make sure this is actually activated. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Goes over. Let's try this one. That blue really nicely. And that's one of those things with um, with a white pen. Yeah, they're acrylic. Okay, acrylic base. That's what I thought. Uh, now I will say with white pen, I really wanted to test that out because I have before in the past put white pen on top of my watercolors and that watercolor paper just absorbs it so fast to where you got nothing. You just wasted your time. So that worked out really well. Let's try this edding marker before I officially try to lift. So this one I need a wet brush at the ready. So this is, this should be pretty fun. Do you have a water-based marker up there? Uh, these are all water-based markers. I mean like a Tombow or anything. Oh, uh, I don't, don't think I do, but we have one right there. Yeah, I was gonna see if you wanted one. <laughs> sure. So this editing marker is acrylic base, so it is essentially acrylic paint, but if I get to it fast enough with the uh, wet brush, I'm sorry, that's our neighbors again. Yeah. That's what happens, it happens, it's a live show. Cannot control our neighbors. <laughs> At least it's not Tuesday at 5.45 p.m. That is also true. Okay, yeah, so these all kind of did what I thought they would. I'm definitely running out of space on this other one. All right, so Tombow, my nose is itchy. Somebody must be thinking about me. Isn't that how it goes? Your nose is itchy, so someone's thinking so. about you? All right, so it's not bleeding too bad. Like it's, like a marker would with any kind of paper, like you can kind of see it absorb in. But again, it's not like feathering out. And this secret paper is doing the exact same thing. It's doing really, really well. And I can, let's do the other side of this. I like it. Very nice. Okay. So let's try to lift this dark pigment that I have on the, the thing here. Because it's 349 and I'm going to start running out of time. Actually, I want this bigger area. All right. So I'm going to leave our specialty paper for last. Because I really want to see. Because this is where... If I'm scrubbing this, and this is 100% cotton, I wanna see what the paper's gonna do, you know? Which, as I expect from a 100% cotton rag, I can kinda see the fibers of that paper 
um, just moving slightly. But it lifted really well, as I would expect. And in case you guys are wondering, this is an aqua lift, little spongy sponge. All right, so let's try this one. Get the dark area where it has a lot of pigment. Again, same thing. I got more pigment on it. Yeah, I can see it kind of almost pilling up if I were to continue to scrub the bejeebers out of it. But it's about the same. Now, get a lot of that pigment off of there. Try the special paper. That's actually the sponge coming apart. <laughs> You know, what's funny is I'm uh, I'm seeing it a little bit again here, but I don't think it's the same amount. Like this has a lot of pilling. This is not as bad. It's like, I would say these two are probably about on par, but like if you see any little like little snippets, that's actually the sponge falling apart on me, <laughs> sorry. But that's good to know. All right, now we're gonna try lifting with a brush. Which color? Let's do, the only thing that's nice and saturated is this pink, okay. Probably should have started with this one last. So I could have a comparison. That's okay. up just like I would expect. They're all lifting up really, really well. That's funny is I can actually look at the, the screen too and see just how well they're all lifting up with those little dots that are missing. <laughs> That's fun. All right, so let's check our, our list here. Okay, so lifting, I did the brush and the aqua lift. Granulation. Ooh, they look, they all look very, very lovely. I actually gotta say, no shade to arches because, you know, I love them, but the granulation on these two, I like it better. This seems like it's very fine. Like it's not, like the, the texture of the paper is what would affect that. Um, but like the texture of these two, I think I prefer. And I also hate to be that guy. I actually think I like this one the most. Cause it's just, oh, that granula, you'll, you'll see it, Amanda, up close. I think you're, you're gonna agree. All right, granulation is done. Mixing colors I did. Big wash. We did some detail strokes. Oh, I didn't do softening strokes, which, where's my watercolor? All right. Let's do, let's do a brown. I haven't done a brown. Do this, I think this is English red. That's a little wet. Oh, 
English red is so pretty too. Mm -hmm. It's like that brick color, right? Yeah. It's similar to a burnt sienna, but a little bit more like pink kind of tinged. And like usually opaque. Very, very opaque, yeah. yeah. Like wildly matte. I want to say a lot of the times the pigment code for English red is PR101. But I will say for PR101, there are so many varieties. <laughs> so that's one of those things that you're going to have to watch. I guess what I'm going to have to draw a relatively straight line. Let's go up. Yeah. So we got a hard, ed hard edge and a soft edge. And I'm lifting that Tombow. <laughs> All right, last one up here. I can get that salt on the, on the paper. It is salt on the paper. Or is that something else? I don't know. There's all kinds of things happening on these papers. All right. Lovely. Yeah, they all did really, really well. Okay. Whoop. So softening strokes. Pens. I will remove it from block at the end, and then we have this, this, and alcohol markers. But I'm running out of space. So, how is my granule or my gradation? I think this is relatively dry. This one's still slightly wet, but I can probably take off the tape now to see how well that does. I want to see if it rips it. Let's see how well it held the edge. Oh, look at that satisfying square right there. And I eyeballed that, guys. Mm-hmm. Eyeballed. Oh, that's fun. All right, uh, this should be dry enough. If I can take it off. I will say also, no ripping. Zero ripping. Nice. Which is, that's one of those things that like, with a 100% cotton rag, you gotta watch it. Sometimes it loves to rip. Same thing. Nice crisp edges. Also, I got a little bit extra space over here. Edges, no ripping. Like it. All right, now for the alcohol. Alcohol ink. This is where I might be able to make a mess of myself. You're always looking for that opportunity. Not intentional. Ooh, and we are at 3:59. Okay. This is. Uh... Okay. Whew. Yeah, this is a bottle of ink. Beat it up. No, no pen nib here. You're so. Well done. Sorry, it's all That's okay. <laughs> Actually, I feel like this is gonna be, it, it's essentially the same thing. It's it's just alcohol ink and to see how it absorbs. Yeah, they both absorb very quickly. Spreads quite a bit and then just soaks right in. And the, the paper we in question does the exact same thing. Now to close this without getting it all over me. I think I got it, I think I got it. All right. I think this is the Pinata alcohol ink. I don't know how, this is an old marker <laughs> that we made. I don't know how well it's gonna survive, but like, or how well it has survived over the years. Okay. 
I mean, the, I think the marker nib is dead, <laughs> but the alcohol ink is not. Oh, I can see it's still dancing on there. But what's funny is, um, cause I don't know what you guys, is this just alcohol ink? I don't know. We'll have to look up what we put in here cause I can still see, um, there's like a little tiny bit of a halo around it. Almost like there's some kind of like a solvent or something in it. There might be alcohol in it. Cause it's yeah. very clear before I shook it up. Yeah. So. The pigment tends to settle yeah. with these. Um, that gold is heavy, so. All right. Oh. Cause we are at 401. I gotta take the masking fluid off and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that's the show. So let's try our secret paper. Both of them removed like a dream. And I'm gonna say there's no tinting, no, no issue with that blue. Which is one of those things that always makes me slightly nervous because it's it feels like it's dye, but it's not. Last one. I think I got it all. Yeah. There we go. Testing. Now what's funny is that the salt is still wet. <laughs> but that's okay. I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm going to uh, take a closer look at everything once it's officially dry. But I think uh, as far as papers are concerned, this, this held its own. My secret paper did really, really well. So uh, you guys tell me, how do you think it, how do you think it did? <laughs> but that is the show guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you guys had any other art questions that you are just have that burning question that about in pertaining to your own artwork that you're just like you need help with, feel free to pop it in the chats below. I always make sure to keep an eye on these videos for you guys. Uh, and of course, join us next time we have an open studio. It is the first and third Thursday of every month. Uh, otherwise, you can also join me on Jerry's Live. But again, like I said, that is a... Uh, coordinated class so I am teaching a very specific topic for each one so uh, make sure you can reach out and watch different techniques maybe you know learn something it's kind of fun experiment a little but I will see you guys next time thank you so much bye